Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the WGL Grand Finals for 2015. We started with 12 teams, we now have just four. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the semi-finals. A packed house here at the Expo 21 for our first semi-final, which features two teams that many are surprised to see last this long. Our first team shocked and surprised one of the favourites for the tournament in the last round after struggling through day one. Please welcome, all the way from the Asian region, EL Gaming! second semi-final team are a team who are no stranger to championship glory. They are the reigning European champions. Please welcome Kazda Crew! China versus Europe in our first semi-final. Let's get the thoughts of our expert panelists. Josh, once more, it's over to you. Thank you very much, Paul. Welcome back to the expert desk, joined by Ola, Mojo, John, and Jordi, as we're going to break down these teams in just a bit. But first of all, we want to take a look at the bracket and where we are in semi-final number one before we reach semi-final number two and then the finals. Right now, Kazza Crew versus EL Gaming in a stunning upset. EL Gaming took out Santa Claus 6. School Bus was defeated by Kazza Crew in an impressive comeback from the European team. Hellraisers was able to defeat Yato Gaming, but barely in a tiebreaker, and Nadis Vincier. Navi took out Virtus Pro. Semi-final two will be Hellraisers versus Navi, and that's going to be one heck of a match as well. We're all very surprised to see how well EL Gaming has done from the Asia Pacific region. Last year, from the Oceania region, we had PvP Super Friends that made it into fourth place. So, this is not new territory coming from the Asian teams, but for a new team to join us in the Grand Finals, it is very impressive. And I look forward to seeing what kind of tactics EL Gaming will bring. I think all of us will think aggression, 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 because that's been working for those teams here at this tournament. I feel that, yeah, like you said, they would just <laughs> keep doing aggression because it worked for them against SC6, which is the most aggressive team by far. And they took them down 5-2. And now it's Kazna, also an aggressive team. So we're going to get lots of brawls, lots of fights. Looking forward to that. Let's go ahead and take a look at EL Gaming just a little bit closer in this video. Jobs are good. I feel very well. I'm very happy to have been able to enter the day two competition. But also um, tomorrow we, we we are about to confront some of the strongest opponents and also we have some mental pressure. Good stuff. There's hundreds of thousands of people watching at home, thousands that have turned out here in Warsaw to watch you play live. What's that like for you and your team to see and feel that energy and the, the crazy fans that are here supporting you? Mm. 对员呢，在某种情况之下会更加兴奋，嗯，就是这样的。嗯， um, every one of our players uh, is an experienced player, and um, we have gone through many competitions, and we have experience in playing in front of a big audience. Of course, um, some of us will experience some uh, mental pressure, but I think that most of us is simply excited to play in front of an audience. 
And there you have it, folks. Straight from EL Gaming last night, they're prepped and ready for today. And it's impressive to see how far any of these teams have come from the amount of battles they've had to fight, not just yesterday, but over the entire season. Elevate, you know, in particular, Jonathan, having to lead your team. Losing at the beginning of the season, those three, those three significant uh, uh, matches, and then be able to build up the momentum. EL Gaming has been building that momentum this entire weekend, and hopefully it'll continue through this matchup. But they're up against Kazda Crew, a team that continues to impress, a team that was on the back foot yesterday, that was making some mistakes yesterday in map choices, but now they're back with a vengeance. I'm really looking forward to this. Uh, EL Gaming, a, bit, a little bit of mystery because of uh, the Asia Pacific region, but Kazda Crew, what were they doing so right earlier today? What was it about Kazda Crew that got the defeat over School Bus? In a moment, in a essence, they decided to play their true playstyle finally, aggressive, fluid, smart, aggressive, not just aggressive. So there was always a thought behind it, and the reactions were basically instinctive and on point, and they are really getting good at it, like better than ever they did. Let's break down smart aggression versus just aggression, because we've seen just aggression in America a lot <laughs> sometimes, especially with teams that are joining us from the qualifiers, teams that are getting acclimated to the Gold League. How would you define the difference between smart aggression and aggression, Jonathan? So the difference between smart aggression and just plain aggression is when you're plain aggressive, you're going to push over a hill, you're going to see tanks, and you're going to shoot at tanks. When you're playing aggressively and smart, you're going to push over a hill, but you're going to cause the other team to do the next step in your strategy. So if we push, we, made t we make a tank run, they're going to run into our crossfire. We're going to be able to blast them down just like that. Uh, and that is what Kazna does so well, smart aggression. We've scrimmed them many times, and it's remarkable how they're able to funnel us into the positions that they want us to be in and then burn us down. And also, I really love the, the point that you made. You need to force your opponent to make the next step in your strategy. You're controlling your opponent's behavior. And if you're able to do that on the battlefield, that gives you a lot of power. The tough part about both of these teams is that they don't have a whole lot of experience competing against each other compared to Kazna crew fighting against the other EU or CIS teams. America has a little bit of that difficulty sometimes as well because we'll watch a lot of those matches, but the teams don't get to scrimmage as much compared to those teams. Uh, but Jordy, how do you overcome that? How do you overcome that for a major tournament like this? I think it's just sticking to your guns and doing your own play style, but also importantly, when you get back to the hotel, watch the other team. Watch how they play, watch how they react. Elong has lots of footage, and now they could see already how Kazna plays. They've already seen Kazna play on Morovanka twice. They've already seen Kazna play on steps. There's only so many things that Kazna can keep on coming up with. So they will fall back to things they've already done. And if EL can interpret these things and use them and counteract on them, they should be able to win a few rounds at least. Well, I know the votes are coming in right now. I hope it's not as one-sided as we saw yesterday, but what's the total tally so far? Well, actually, so far the votes are 92% for Kazna crew and 8% for Elong, but actually, you can change it by voting for your team with the exact scoreline prediction at uh, fb.com slash WGLEU. And uh, who knows, maybe you will be the one who will win uh, the World of Tanks branded Kraken Pro headset plus one of 20 bonus codes. Nice, and that is a great yes. headset. Also, uh, the other item that we had from Razer was the Death Adder mouse, the branded World of Tanks mouse. Yes, it was the last time. Nice, so this one's the Kraken. Yes. Okay, cool. It's a great mouse. I really love the branding on it. It's great colors. You've seen them. I have. You I have love seen them. them. Yeah. Uh, gentlemen, now moving on into the map selections. Morovanka map one, Cliff map two. Aggression is going to be kind of like the hot topic for both these different teams. But do you tell too much in your tank selections at the beginning in battle number one? Or is that something that you can be the most flexible with in the first battle with the tank selections? Your thoughts first, Jonathan. Well, I think when we're playing at a tournament like this, teams have new strategies. They have those pocket strategies that they've developed that they've hidden from other teams. And I think it's very possible that we're going to see team compositions that may look like one strategy but are in fact something different. Uh, so. It may, it may be more of a bait than a uh, giveaway. Seen a lot of T-54s at this tournament, though. Something that we don't see a whole lot in America. Is that something that you've definitely taken notice in seeing what the power of the T-54 has uh, on these maps? Absolutely. We spend a lot of time trying to bring that T-54 meta to America. Uh, North America plays a much heavier meta right yep. now, and we think that the T-54 T meta is superior. We're trying to get to that point where we can play it every match. And we have been impressed with the meta that uh, the Chinese and Asian Pacific players have been bringing.
but also see adaptability. It's, oh man, we, we lost in battle number one. How do we turn around in battle number two? When you do lose the first battle, what is on your priority list? What's the first thing you need to change? What's the first thing that you look at in order to turn it around for the next battle? I think if, it's, if you plan on playing the same strategy, make sure you don't lose to the strategy the other team played to begin with. Change a few positions, make sure that you're ready for that. Because if you want to play the same thing, just make sure that it's better than last time. Um, I think it's also really important that the team captain takes the lead and he says to the guys, okay, we're not talking about the previous battle anymore. We're focusing on this one. I don't want to hear anything about the previous battle. Just focus on this one. Didn't Kazza crew yesterday have an issue, though, where they did the, pretty much the exact same thing uh, when that reset happened, where they were in the exact same position, and then I believe it was Yato just pushed up in the exact same place. It was completely predictable, and they got the win. That's something they obviously want to try to avoid, uh, barring the technical issue. How do you try to avoid that? How do you not be predictable? Uh, even though the last strategy worked and functioned very well and got you the win, so you don't do the same thing again. I think it depends. You don't necessarily need to play the same tactic, but what works is faking out a part of that tactic. Yeah. Like, you send a few tanks to the position again, they're like, okay, they're doing the same thing, so do this. And now all of a sudden, you're on all different positions preventing the tactic they're playing from happening. It's either that or you do something, every team has more than one tactic on the map, and you just do something completely different, throwing them off, so they have to reset in their mind as well, okay, they're thinking about what you're doing now and not what you did in the previous round. Teams that play the same tactic twice are usually the teams that don't respect their enemy yeah. enough. Uh, Kazna obviously did exactly that and paid the price then. After that, they really thought it over and did different things. What areas of Morovanka allow you to be the most aggressive? What approaches do you feel can either be possibly the most foolhardy but could have a high risk, high reward? And what approaches are the most safe that these two teams can take on Morovanka? Well, on Morovanka, I think defending the left side corner is the most safe bet you can take. But I think it's one of those few maps I really like a lot because it has lots of versatility. You can make traps, you can make very effective traps, you can make very aggressive pushes. Even as the defenders, you can make very aggressive pushes. Kazna showed us yesterday that you don't necessarily need to be in the base to defend it. They defended it from the K-line, which not a lot of teams do. So, so it's a map that allows for lots of different things, lots of different strategies, and that's why it's one of my favorite personal maps. And one of the things about Moravanka, at least in America, is we would find teams use the magical force very effectively or they would completely avoid it. That could be a death trap for a lot of teams because tanks could be very well hidden in there. If you can't find your enemy after about two minutes or scouting's not really giving you a whole lot of information, what's the next call after that? Well, if you can't find the other team for two minutes, you can generally assume you know exactly where they are. So uh, I think, uh, as one of the casters said it earlier, not seeing something means you're seeing everything. Definitely. That's still information. That's still information. And sometimes we'll see a lot of those tanks be trying to push into that flag cap area. We talked about trying to put more pressure on the flag caps. It's, it's just a little bit tough to see that one tank trying to scurry around, dodge a couple of those shots, and be completely out of the fight once two tanks are able to scout it. They know, oh, it's going to be a, a six on seven or a five on seven if we push in the opposite direction. So specifically on Morovanka, how do you contain or, or keep up the pressure in the flag cap but still contain the battle uh, in case they start to move to the north. I think it's really important to Morovanka that you kill that spotter one way or another, that guy, he has to die. If you leave that spotter alive and you didn't kill him in the first minute, you have about one more minute, one more minute in which you can blind fire him and try to kill him. If you do not, then the flag cap is not going to work. Because the only way you put pressure on a team that's defending the left cap with a spotter is to kill that spotter make them do a move and react to that move while still leaving the tier six in the cap. That's controlling your opponent's behavior. Make them have to scout and find out where you're at. And that's, those are those small steps of achievements or those small little victories that earn a bitter, bigger battle victory. But it's tough. It really is because these teams are so calculated in their movements. And because of those calculations, if they can find a mistake, they will exploit that mistake very quickly, especially the most aggressive teams. Mojo, any last thoughts before we throw it to the commentators? For Morovanka, I think it's one of the rare maps in this pool that's actually not given us all. I think the current meta is just one of the passing phase and there is a lot to be said more. Uh, variety of tanks that can be used are overwhelming. You can use everything because terrain allows it. Heavies, mediums, You've seen everything in the season 69, Artilleries, heavies, artillery. Everything was used and it can be reused in different manner. So it's only imagination that will stop teams to do something. Only thing they differ each other with is who wants to play more tactical and who wants to avoid it. Who wants to avoid, even as defender, they will seek early confrontation to avoid the spotting period, to see the enemy and to have the eyes on them the entire game. 
short or long. Thank you, gentlemen. Ola will be standing by to hear from you online. Make sure to send in your tweets using the hashtag the Grand Finals and vote for which team you want to win at thegrandfinals.com. And now it's time for the first semifinal match. Let's throw it over to the commentators. Thank you very much, Josh. G'day, everybody. Or should I say, Yakshimash Warsaw. Got a semi final coming up. It's going to be a ripper. Kasna Crew, EL Gaming, two teams from two very different regions, two differing play styles. It's going to be an absolute cracker. I know. And we are hearing everything about Elong just being incredibly aggressive, just non stop. I mean, you, I was reading up on what happened in their previous match. They didn't do anything but just go forward right into their opponent, which is so surprising that they're able to get such results out of it. And on a map like Moravanka, which we're about to see, I'm, I'm worried for Kazna crew. Okay, uh, I have actually had some first-hand experience with Elong, uh, the team I sort of used to be a part of, or was more of a mascot for NUM in the uh, APAC Gold League. Elon came out of nowhere and just uh, rocked us. Uh, they sort of came across from China, changed name, and we were like, who are these guys? And they crushed us, and even in the Gold Series this time around, had absolutely crushed us as well. Look out for Reflections. Second from the left, he is the voice of the team for Elon Gaming. He is a big personality. He is their morale. He will keep them fired up. The reason why EL conquered SC6 was because they managed to keep their morale at that constant level. They're going to be absolutely strong. Muravanka is EL Gaming's never lose map. In the last season of the APAC, they didn't lose a game on this one until the finals against Arate, where they, uh, they had some trouble. Now, EL Gaming are defending. Don't expect them to play like that, though. They're stopping up, though, right at the start. Is this a little bit of a trick? Because we, we know what to expect. So does Kazna. They've studied up on their opponent. They've asked everyone else uh, what's going on. This is this appears to be a trap to me. For that exact reason, perhaps EO might try for a little bit of variation yeah, here. Hyber, so obviously, he's going to be key for Kazna right now. He is the cooler. He's the guy that is going to try and help his team to use the aggression That's of EO the against the them. Line. But he's been spotted. He is. I'm he's lit. He knows me. there's an opponent in that area. They now can pinpoint that they are in that lower left quadrant of the map. And from here, Kazna crew can figure out how to approach the situation. Now, Hyba has taken 259 damage. That's it. That's from Nightmare on EL Gaming. He's going to be able to back off. And that little bit of information can help Kazna. They can start working with this. But Hyba has to be careful. He's very far forward. Look at that setup. But see, this is EL Gaming. This might indicate to you that I don't know a whole lot about what Kazna might do. Nightmare is looking. Dangerous fragger, this guy. Very, very impactful player. You can see now as he's just trying to get his head over the hill. Does spot Hybrid is spotted in response. Might try and set something up here. Ordinarily, what we see from EO Gaming against maybe like another Asia or APAC team, they will push quite hard on the defensive side. They will absolutely go for the throat. So this is a, a standard setup, more standard than I'd expect to see from any APAC team. You see, a little bit of chatter now starting to come in. They're thinking about it. Is there, is it in that spot with the T37? He'll be able to light some stuff up, some, perhaps some blind fire as well. Yeah, I'm also looking into the southeast. T37 is getting a nice cross. I think EL. Holding off as long as I have might start to work against them because Kazan crew knows how to deal with this situation. The exact position that you see everyone from EL Gaming sitting and waiting in is exactly where you'll see a team like Kazna crew set up a solid crossfire and begin picking them apart. EL is going to have to just find that trigger a little sooner because Kazna is not falling for it. They're not dedicating enough resources into the wrong spot. They still can create that crossfire, and that looks like it's going to be it. EL is just going to go forward. Oh. Black taking a lot of hits it's right okay. in the opening volley. It is the LTTB, so he soaked up a bit of damage that otherwise would have gone to one of those tier 8 tanks. Hyper might get jumped on here by Nice, one of the highest damage dealers from EL Gaming. The shot towards Nightmare. Hyper trying to focus, but he is absolutely caught out. Look at the overmatch on Vetso in the background as well. Raster and Eurofish trying to help out, but the hill meets, so they can't follow up. So that overmatch was perfect for EL. EL Gaming, Hype is down, Vetso is also down, EL Gaming still with a full cohort of tanks. EL, absolutely perfect timing. They found the moment when Kazna crew was not ready and just not waiting for that attack, picking the two right tanks, Veko, Hyba, just boxing them out, splitting them apart, and not allowing your allies to support. Now we are in a trickier situation. Kazna is surrounded by EL, and there's a horde descending upon some remaining tanks. Let's see if they can fight their way out. Fox TS might be biting off a little bit more than he can chew. He's straight in towards the village, and Ruster is chasing him down now. Spring trying to get out and take care of LD Nexus. He knows he has the lowest tank. That's the best chance of getting a kill there. Spring Force get behind the building. Quad Ram trying to assist from a distance. Up the back, Reflection is still standing, but the health points of EL Gaming are dropping. They are dropping and dropping. Ruster now 
wants to come towards Spring. He's got the advantage here. Guan Ren can he assist? No! Great focus from Eurofish off to the side to take him out. Now Spring has no support. Nightmare and reflection. The last two standing. Absolutely amazing from Kaznel. It looked for a moment like they weren't going to be able to hold against this, but they gave some ground, kind of dragged out EL Gaming and just gave them too much distance is. to deal with. Great recovery from Kazna. We know the way that Muravanka works with the hills there. It can be very, very hard to follow up. It can be hard to trade into your enemy. We saw uh, Kazna lost two tanks without response. And the mistake was ELs when they pushed up. Yeah, they just kept going forward instead of regrouping, finding that new target. They got spread out. You saw small groups going in very different directions, some 1v1s that weren't going to go their way. It, it, it was just getting ahead of yourself. I think they may be losing that focus that was getting them wins earlier today and also yesterday. Well, first game to Kasna Crew. Now, EO Gaming start to have Kasna's measure here, right? They understand a little bit more about the setup. To be fair, it was more standard play than we've seen from any game that a Chinese or Asia-Pacific team has been involved in. This is not the potential of EO we're seeing yet. This is just the beginning. Uh, I love Kazza. Some, uh, some lovely guys in that team, but they are going to have to be ready for a more than that, more aggressive pushes. That was very much an intelligence gaining sort of mission there for EL. They sat back on the hill. They wanted to see what their positioning would be, what the movements. This is their map. This is absolutely EL Gaming's map. But the, the flip side to this is that Muravanka is a map where Kazna have caused some massive upsets. Virtus Pro uh, Season 5 Finals is a great example of this. They are ready to roll, and uh, both these teams are definitely might mix it up a little bit, actually. I'd be interested to see Kazna Crew, if they play standard again, they're definitely going to be playing into a different setup from EL. It will be a different setup. You think they're just trying to set them off balance, slow it down. You know what to expect, or you think, rather, you know what to expect from this team, and then they just, they don't. They, you can't even spot them for a little while. I think that they're playing that head game like you're talking about. And also, I think the analysts were saying something earlier, you know, when you show up at a tournament like this, play your game. That could start working against EL if they continue with that slower play style. If they alter at this point in the tournament and start playing slower or try emulating styles from other regions, I, I don't think that they're going to be able to execute nearly as well as that constant aggression. I mean, they were able to go against SC6 and go with a 5-2 victory, which is absolutely massive by by our expectations. And that, that victory was built off the foundation of aggressive push after aggressive push. Even a team like we play Santa Claus and Six Deers couldn't deal with that aggression that was being brought to them by Elon. And that, that is saying something. Kazna in the past, they've evolved a little bit now, but in the past they were not aggressive, they were not overly creative. They're quite a static team, but they need to be dynamic here as well. They have grown, they have developed over time, and it's time for us now to see the fruits of their labor, especially against a team like EL who will mix it up. They have to adapt mid-round or late-round they need to understand, they need to keep their eyes and have a macroscopic view of this map and of the game. All right, we're going into battle number two. Elon, will they just bring that aggression if they hold off? I'm not seeing a lot of success right now, but it could be a trick. I'm going to keep that one in the background. This could just be that from them. And a bit of a shout out to the Polish fans as well. Elon is wearing his Lemming Train jacket with the red and white flag on the shoulder. He's definitely feeling the pride here. And the hometown crowd is absolutely behind him. What are we seeing in the early stages of this one? Kazna attacking, EL defending. We've got the two LTTBs from EL again. On the other side, Kazna, same lineup, just as many T54 lightweights as they can bring. And on the open, Kazna he heading east. I like that they're sending T37 right down the six line, a little bit of a early scout run, but safe enough that they can cover it, they can pull back and they can keep that tank alive, or at least make it a valuable tank to lose if it comes to that. But EL, heading up the 1-2, are going to be stopping slightly farther north than they did last time, telling us that they want to take this pace, slow it down, and, and not really go for that, that incredible aggression. This is not characteristic of what, what I've come to know of EL. Right now, where Kasna are on the map, normally by this time, EL would be there as well. As a defender, they would actually push that. The problem is now is that EL have put themselves in uh, essentially a retake scenario, okay? They, they back off that cap. They, all have, they have left that 154 lightweight of Nightmare, who is one of their most frightening players. I already said that, but 
they might, Eel might try and get a bit of a, a wider view of the map here. But this kind of maneuver is probably going to require them to split their forces, one through the E line and one coming down on the five line as well. Now, the way they're moving to the north right now, if the T-37 from Kazna is able to spot that, and then we see that continued aggression across from the East and EL, I, there might be enough time for Kazna to respond, pull back a little bit, set up shop, and, and just get ready to take apart some EL tanks. But EL doesn't seem like they want to take that risk yet. They're going to actually pull back south, which tells me they aren't that confident in their ability to engage or in the positioning and exact layout of their opponent right now. No, 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 no. no. He's not he's on the scout run at the moment. I not a lot of information being gained at all. So as, uh, as sort of Zoid said on the desk, sometimes no information is all the information you need. But because I don't know whether EL are backed up into the K sort of 2-3 area or they're on sort of H2 on the hill. So they still, they have been able to whittle down some possibilities here, but they still don't quite know. The problem is EL kind of giving Kazner a bit of a foothold here on the southeastern part of the map. Here come the shots, though. Yeah, and, and EL isn't set up to deal with this cap position. They don't have that passive scout sitting in, you know, around Juliet 5-6, around that area. That's an incredibly safe spot. You can spot the cap, deal with the position, and then force your opponent to waste time trying to figure out a new approach. Now, Fox TS has taken a little bit of damage, but you are going to see a little bit traded back into Kazna crew. No real gains on either side, but Kazna is the one on the clock. That's the price that Fox TS actually pays to actually dig Kazna out of that really annoying spot there at about uh, K7, K8. So Fox is happy to take a bit of damage there. He essentially uh, is a little, well, it might be a little bit trickier to hit here. He needs some follow-up. There absolutely must be some follow-up from EL right now. They're sitting up on the hill, but only Hyber is visible at the moment. And here come the shots towards him, but he's shrugging them off so far. Fox TS, they're gonna lose him for no game. That, that's not what you need to happen. That T-54 needs to stay alive. He's supposed to perform in that hold down, but you saw Kazna was so focused making their shots, you have to give it to him and that it's, it doesn't happen that way very often that you're able to just take out the T-54 in a matter of 10, 15 seconds. What happens here? is that EL have to group up and push. They are eventually going to have to go towards that cap. They don't have a forward scout. The LTTB is in God knows where, maybe trying to check and see if Kazakuru have left any people back. EL are going to be forced to push on. We've seen this before from them. It falls apart. They're going to go to the cap, they're going to get wrecked. Yeah, 20 seconds left, all three on cap from Kazna. They realize, wait, we can force them to come to us. They don't have the passive scout over here. They don't have something waiting. We can deal with this position. And now we're even seeing the the rest of Kazna just group up. They might even mob onto Cap, or we might see a bit of a screen where num members of Kazna are going to go forward to just start the fight elsewhere. This is actually quite good. So EL actually managed to reset, force Kazra off the cap, not losing too much yet, but Guan Ren forced to come forward. Black is there now. Uh, as you've already seen, this is not a spot where they are fully protected. They can still be hit. Hyber was doing damage, I think, early on to Fox TS, and so was LD Nexus and East there. So Black now forcing his way back. They're trying to stall Kazna out. The question is, can Kazna maintain their composure? Can they not can they avoid getting impatient and making a big mistake? EL gaming holding on two minutes thirty left. Something has got to give. Something has to, but EL's holding back on that high ground. You were talking about how they're just killing time, and that's exactly what they have to be doing here. There's no other real strategy. I can see the T-54 lightweight that they lost earlier, Fox TS, is working as cover. He's doing more work dead as he was alive, to be <laughs> fair. He, he really is, but because you can spot through a wreck mm -hmm. in the game, which is which a, a, a little element you'd have to take advantage of when you have the option to, but Kazna is going for the push, and... They're spotted. They're about to go up and over, but EL is going to be prepared, or they're just falling back entirely. EL in full scout retreat at the moment. Vetso up on the hill, sliding on down. You can see them all coming across the screen. EL tried to stay alive, but they're just sitting back. There's just target practice right now for Kazna as they shoot them as they come across their screen. Kazna need to focus outside of just their own crosshairs, though, right now. Guan Ren, nice spring reflection, trying to push in. They do have the overmatch, but for how long? We wait for the rest of Kazna to respond. Is they going low? He might not be the first target they really want. LD Nexus will be next, but there's Rust to pick up nice from afar. Oh, they had the overmatch, but it's all going wrong now. Spring trying to hold behind the hull of that tank. Hyber is going to be more than happy to take the 1v1. Urofish takes out Nightmare. Where is Reflection? He's caught over towards the cap. He's being chased by the majority of Kazza. EO Gaming have one more minute to survive. They are not going to make it. No, they're not going to be able to do this. They were trying to break out of that surrounded position, but they could not continue forward. They could not get the focus fire. They could not land all their shots. Now it's just going to be a matter of time. All right, look at this spring, last base setting. You will get taken down. Two rounds to none for Kazza Crew. And that was a definitive display of strength and confidence. They knew exactly how to come forward. They played the clock well.
EL Gaming felt like, they thought at least, they had some time to kill. They could relax a little bit, but that push onto the hill was beautifully orchestrated. Yeah, and the timing of it. You realize that your opponent, when they see one minute on the clock, is gonna go, okay, we can, we can play the clock. We can just break out of this, run. They can't cap. We can return if we need to and reset, but it's, it's not something you're gonna let them do. You're going to stop them. You have the tanks in the east. They're in strong positions that are difficult to attack. They're gonna have to pay a toll in order to begin that engagement, which makes that overmatch a little bit less potent. And you can then recover from it, even though you're going to lose tanks. And Kazda did not waste time catching up to their opponent and cutting them off. You can quote me on this, and you can take it all the way to the bank. This is not the way that Elong intend to play when they come out here on stage. Something isn't going right for them. I know that for a fact. But what? It's there. They're on the attacking side now. At least they, uh, the onus is at least on them now to come forward because that is absolutely not what they've been doing in these last couple of matches. It's strange that the team known for it, uh, just attacking even on defense, they don't let up, is, is slowing things down. You can see how it's affecting their performance. They're not looking like the team that had just beat SC6. You look to players on Casino like Rasta and Elian to see really where the morale is because those guys are, are very much the window into the heart of that particular team. And they're looking comfortable right now. You can see Rasta more than happy just to sit back as well. Isno, deep breath, get into this next one as well. All of those front row especially, which to be fair is quite often the rowdy ones, all right? Especially with Vetso in the mix, you know it's gonna be pretty loud. We saw some photos as well earlier from the Kazna's win, Arasta was just uh, red in the face, screaming and yelling. They might have that semi-final, or should I say, they might have the grand final berth that they've been aiming for. That would be a dream for these guys. But standing in the way, of course, the Juggernauts from the ATAC region. EL Gaming, they may be down by two rounds, but this time it's attacking. We need to see something different from them, otherwise this will be a blowout. Exactly. They can still turn it around. There is still time. Let's see what we can do. We head into our third round very, very quickly here. You can see Caster Crew. Cool, calm and collected. Even LD Nexus just chilling back. Alien as well as that guy. Just cannot read his face right now. So they're just keeping it under wraps at this stage, not letting, not trying to get ahead of themselves. This is this is the day two Kazna we always see, and it's so exciting. But let's have a look here. We may they're very slow. I don't, un I don't understand this. I've never seen something like this before. Stopping where you're seeing Elong stop with their T54 lineup, just it. This is just confusing to see. Everything I've come to know about EL has been to the contrary of what I'm seeing now, which is they don't even hesitate in their attacks. They just go forward. They suffocate you under all of that pressure. You cannot get a moment to yourself to think, but they're giving Casta Crew time to collect themselves and time to think about how to deal with this opponent. And you can tell how, much how time experienced. Though, really? How much time right now? Because Guan Ren's going to go over the hill. They're going to find Hyper first, but they're walking into a crossfire. They've got to get shut down if they're not careful. They've got to deal with Hyper first, but they've also got to look past Hyper at the guys that are just laying into them from the tree line. This is not how you unseat a Murafaka defensive setup. Look at them going. Vetso low, to be fair. And Reflection and Black coming on, up on the sides of those LTCBs. Ruster and Alien forced to move around the building. It's going to be a full-scale dogfight. EL Gaming do go in with that one-take advantage. That is an advantage to moving as a team. Vetso no, still healthy right now. Guan Ren is down. Hyper's down. One-take piece. The only Nexus is going to get chased down. Fox TS takes down Vetso as well. Somehow, EL Gaming pouring over that hill. It's working out for them. Kazna is not staying together in this fight. Fight. They're not staying focused, and they're letting EL just break in and start tearing them apart. They are catching that momentum, and this is the EL we wanted to see. This is the EL we were promised. It is not over yet. Nightmare is still standing, but only just Fox TS trying to deal with Elian right now. It's close in terms of health points. It's real close. Elian, though, got to get focused on to Black and the LTTV. Fox TS, star player for EL Gaming, got to be assisting there. Eurofish and Easton, last two guys standing. Eurofish is just going to get jumped on. There's no follow-up. Easton probably, he's on reload the 12 tons, so you know it's going to take a while. Black picks up Eurofish, and this is what can happen if you push into a team with your entire team, and they, you lose your nerve. The focus fire is not there. Now, they had to have been waiting for this. They had to have said, we this know what they're going to bring to us. They're going to be aggressive, and then they didn't. It throws you off guard. Kazza's not ready for that. They're saying, wait, what? They're going to slow this down? All right, let's get ready for that. Let's start preparing for a slower paced team. Someone who's gonna wait a few minutes before they attack. Someone who's gonna set up with real positions and crossfires. They're not going to just come in and try and brawl us. But you switch it up halfway through. I think that sh that's the plan. EL said, all right guys, everyone knows what we're gonna do. They know we're aggressive and they're gonna be able to deal with it. They're going to counter it. You could see it in the very beginning. You could see that Kazna was ready for an initial push Wait, off the bat. That was sitting so far back. Yeah. 
And and now when they finally bring it after two losses, it's it's just a trick. You're enticing your opponent in to a position where, okay, they're not going to push us anymore. Let's just set up standard positions. We'll figure out what they're doing in a minute or two after we get some spotting. None of that happened. No. I mean, is it worth investing two rounds, in t two losing rounds, uh, to be fair, into trying to shake your opponent? I don't know, but that, that's, that's a different EO game into what we saw earlier. We saw them sort of wait up. It was there, definitely a timing push. They were making sure everyone was on the same page and all together. That's the kind of coordination that we're seeing from uh, one of H's first professional teams, and they are really putting it together. And this is what we struggled with go going up against them in the APAC region as well. Their team fighting was so darn good, uh, especially like NUM as well, was full of really good players from Australia and New Zealand. We're up there. I think we, we almost made sort of season two finals. These guys were just next level coming in. We, we could practice all day against them, head to head, in brawls, just trying to, you know, work on our shots and our picking of them, but they would still always be that step ahead, and we never had an easy match against them. We never go in thinking, we've got their measure right now, because you could never know what they were going to bring. And now they've pinned something else onto their play style. They're playing the entire match. They're looking at every single battle in order and saying, all right, how are we going to play all of this? We're going to lose somewhere. Let's try and dictate everything. Let's make sure we put these losses at the beginning these weird matches at the beginning, they probably they could have tried to win, but that's not really their play style. Right at the beginning, then we'll catch some momentum, we'll throw Kazna off, we'll kind of play around with that emotional state that they're in. They're, they were coming into this feeling good, confident. Let's, uh, let's make it look like that other Kazna. Well, Kazna now have a chance to respond. So in your gaming, you've invested those two rounds. Well, I'll, I'll use that. That's, that's a very diplomatic way to put it, right? Kazan have the chance to come back. We've seen them, I mean, against School Bus, they just exploded back into life after the steps, uh, you know, map, which was pretty, pretty lackluster. Bearing in mind, this is, this is what I would have thought was EL Gaming's map. Kazner have always been good at Moravanka. It's always been like an either, either which way map. Bearing in mind the next map, of course, is going to be Cliff, which is... Uh, Murvan I think Moravanka and Cliff were the two maps that School Bus banned against Kazner. Kazner on Cliff was frightening, and, and honestly, School Bus, to add to their current nightmares, they, ha they were having nightmares about Kazner's Cliff play from the Season 5 Finals. It was ferocious. Let's see the look on these guys' faces. Let's see how they're traveling into this next one. It's the last round we're going to see on Muravanka. It's a good chance for EL to bring this one back for Kazner to keep their heel ground into their opponents. And what strategy are they going to bring? I'm expecting that aggression once more. Push straight off the bat. Right down the east side, bring it across. Something that's unexpected. How do you deal with that? Kazma, Kazna, to be fair, should have had that one. They set up really, 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 really well. This time, not so much of a wait here, so the timing might be a little bit different. Look at the lineup here, tank-wise, for Kazna, though. Yeah, I really like that as well. That T32 is something that drew my eye immediately, as he's going to go into the position that we saw last time. Same opening from EL. They're going to go forward, but this time it's a T32, a difficult tank Clever to choice. take down. You have more hit points. He's going to be able to deal some damage before he goes down, and on top of that... Hyper wants the proxy here. He might be able to even get some hold down shots before they, they start pushing in. Oh. Oh. He'll bounce that one away. Didn't he get the hit? He was spotted, and I think he actually spotted a, yeah, a couple of the light weights there as well. So now has the crew know they can set up here as well, but if they can't train their guns on the right targets and hit that mouse one at the right time, it's not going to matter how long he'll wait before pushing onto them. But this is going to be that game of cat and mouse. Reflection off to the side, taking a little bit of damage. The majority of the L up on this hill. Hyber holding nicely. Great choice, that T32. Yeah, although this M41, if he stays too far out and continues chasing down Reflector. Reflector might start counting shots, but it looks like EL's going to start the fight. Now, T-32 does have a bigger health pool than a lightweight, but they're actually going to essentially, well, not ignore it, but they're going to drive right off and get in position for their next shots. Hyper just goes down there, not before Eurofish picks up Black Iliad. Ruster, Eurofish, they're ready for this push. They want blood, and they're going to get it. Guan Red coming through. Spring as well. Nice gets a shot on towards Ruster. Ruster takes a double tap in that moment. He goes very, very low. Vetso onto Fox TS. Iliad goes down. Star player for Kazza. Six feet under so far. Ruster. Vetso, LD Nexus have got to coordinate themselves here. It's a 3v3 matchup in this particular vicinity. Is they trying to come and support? Now we can see Guan Ren going low. He's got to stay alive for a little bit longer. The overmatch for Kazza in this day. They're grinding it out. It's not pretty. It's not easy. But it's effective. Kazza crew still hanging on. Elon Gaming down by about a thousand health points. Yeah, they just stayed focused through the entire thing. And you can see how the T32 was so effective. Staying alive just a few seconds longer. Bouncing shells. Wasting the effectiveness and potential damage damage of EL, they could not follow through with their attack after having to bypass a T32 like that. Great response from Kazna, altering their lineup to account for their opponent.
And this is my concern, having seen EO Gaming play, is that sometimes if plan A doesn't work out, there is no plan B, whether inside a match or in the four rounds of a map. That line up there, that push was essentially the same, but you, you've got to expect that Kasner will change something. They will be thinking about that. The T32 of Hyper soaked up some really important damage. In fact, the first time they actually had him as they came down the hill, they killed him before they even got to the bottom. This time, they were almost toward the tree line before they managed to deal with him. So, intense, intense games. It's a 3-1 to Kasner. But let's pass over to our experts and get their opinions on those games. Thank you, Mission Randall. Some very impeccable, aggressive type of play, which we did predict. But the almost no-holds-barred type of aggression we're seeing from EL Gaming is fantastic. But let's go ahead and jump into that first battle. You want to break down what happened on the map for us, Mojo? Yes. Uh, I want to show the positions EL actually had. Uh, they set up entire line of defense here in uh, this area. What they did, uh, all the tanks in the start started shooting on the buildings here to break all the walls and possible obstacles. They set one guy as a bait spotter here, and one guy stayed here. What they actually wanted is for Kazna in one moment to push this area here, for them to shoot them off, and then to overwhelm them with the entire aggression with the entire team. It didn't work out. Kazna was, is not, are not fools. They read it out, they countered, and it ended up in a big brawl. What impressed me in that game, skill was great, shooting was really great, Kazna was on down foot. But we had like little battle of two little men in one corner here, Izne in tier 6 and LTB tier 7, chasing each other all the time. Izne bought so much time that the guy had to turn around, go for the other team, and he was actually one of the guns that solved the battle. There also, I, I think entire Kazna team surviving was on like 700-800 health. And he was surviving that last two minutes and shooting them in the back all the time. Those details matter. That player skill matters. Every tank matters. He knows it and he did it. That was really, really nice. That's what I liked. I think Elon was also waiting for them to come in the five line though. Not only just the one line, but in the five line. Haiba was not pushed up far enough for them because they were waiting in the bushes. I think the secondary plan was if Haiba pushes up in the five line, because he was spotting from very far back. If he pushed up, they would just pounce over and push. But because Kazna didn't do that, they had to react differently. They broke the houses so they would prevent if Kazna does this, because this, this is like the most dangerous scenario yeah. for them. If Kazna gets behind them, they're dead. But they were they also waiting for the five line, because Haiba was spotting yes, yes. on there. And not then very they far can up. counter push yeah. and do that. But the basic tactics of theirs are always aggression. So if they're defending, they're ready to just leap over like a tiger and go in the enemy. And later we saw when they were attacking, it was really, really aggressive play. Like they went, I, I can't call, call it like a full YOLO, but it was <laughs> like bite for the next straight. And it was a really great brawl. Kazna lost it, they learned something upon it. They used the T32 then as an anchor and a bait on exactly the same position, in a position everyone was like. He was buying them time with his health. Also, I think um, the second game, they missed a lot of shots on that Bulldog, Isner, which, which was spotted. If they actually managed to do the damage on him that he should have received, they would have had an opening, because in the third battle, they pushed with seven. Now they had six and an LTB coming from behind. So, I mean, if they killed him, they had a great opening to go for the yes. cap. And now they, their hand was kind of forced, and the T32 took twice as much time to kill as the last time. Yeah, yeah. Isner survived again. And I can say only, like, uh, Yell should, like, take another sentences, their motto, chaos is, chaos is leather. That, that's them. Definitely. Definitely. I right, thank you, gentlemen. We're going to come back after this next map, which is going to be Cliff. Let's throw it back to the commentators. Thank you very much, Joshua. All right, time for our second map, Cliff. And of course, Kazna have always been strong on this particular map. It is their pick, if I'm not mistaken. And Neon Gaming have to come up with the goods. It really is do or die. Really is. This is a place where we can see EL get back into this. Because right now, the way this is going, I'm seeing Kazner running away with victories to clean this one out. If EL can get back on that aggression and make it work, take those fights to the middle of the map, they could start getting some momentum and shutting down Kazner. But it's going to come down to those brawls. It's going to come down to coordination in an incredibly stressful and fast-paced environment. Cliff, of course. Kazner will be on the attacking side first. And that's going to mean, obviously, that if Elong choose to do so, you know what, no, no. 
I'm throwing all these tactics out of the window. I'm doing this now because Elon are probably just going to push straight over mid. They're going to try and get the upper hand in that dogfight. I mean, if they wanted to be a little bit careful about it, they can get up to the up the hill first and sort of get that hold down position. But the Elon guys have all taken their S keys off their keyboards. So there's no point even bothering about using those. Forward is the best direction. Mm, That's all well. you need to do. Go straight at your opponent. And I think Kazan knows just as well. Ooh. We've seen matches like this Eel in the group attacking. stages. And we're going to have a slight flank. I like that the LTB from Black is going out to the flank, but we are about to see them clash oh. right in the middle. Black trying to get back into the fight late, and the damage going way into the favor of EL at the start. Yeah, it's a good start. Fox CS only taking a little bit of damage there. Venso goes down, Spring takes down Rasta. Reflection and Rasta are in the dirt thus far. Guan Ren taking a lot of damage. Look, they've gone on towards Ely, they got that 3v1 scenario. Eurofish also got to get dumped on as well. Trying to get behind the rock. Spring can now join up with Black and Nightmare. They can turn on to Venso. They're going one by one by one EL game with excellent focus, Captain Crew uh, trying to hold on at this stage, nice is still full health, Nightmare is very very close as well, Hive is in the Bulldog, I don't know about this one. And it's going to be Kazza. Kazza's got the hit points. They've got a tank on the battlefield, but Nexus needs to stay alive a little bit longer. He will go down. That's a chance for EL. They have the hit points, and now it's going to be full retreat from Kazza. The Bulldogs are on reload, and EL Gaming know this. They're trying to chase them down. Nightmare and Nice. Two of the strongest players for EO Gaming are hit on towards Hyper as well. How long can Hyper stay alive for Isne? Trying to tuck himself around the corner. He'll be loaded. He'll be able to unload in just a second. Hyper needs to set up, find a good place to fire from. They might even have some crossfire here. There's got to be good focus by Joe. Oh, he's he's a double tap. He's set on fire. Hyper burns to the ground. And Isne is the last man standing. He's got to get left upon as well. And the very, look, this is a great metaphor for the game. He's very precariously perching on the edge of that cliff. And Isne tried to hold on here. He's got 179 hit points. And EO Gaming gonna line him up. We have a game here, Rukul. Absolutely, that was stunning. I did not expect that to go that way. It was back and forth right at the start. Damage was in favor of EL, but they lost one gun on the battlefield. They were not able to maintain the same damage per minute as their opponent. And then it swung into the favor of EL. But holding on, Kazna was able to hold on for a little bit, and they kept that one extra tank alive at the end of the brawl. Then you had the M41s running and just trying to get on the reload. If they had gotten it and, and set up solid positions, they had a good chance, but they couldn't because the pressure just kept coming. EL playing their style and not wavering from it. This is what they need to do in this environment, not going with those strategies we saw earlier. Nothing, nothing but aggression. They need to stay with it because that's what's going to get them these wins. I mean, there's Bull Walker Bulldogs. It's not a long reload time on those auto loaders, and yes, there are 10 shells, but that's still a good 10 seconds when you can't do anything. Hyber was retreating the entire time, trying to fight back, but the double tap towards him and set him on fire. Walker Bulldogs are not durable tanks by any stretch of the imagination, and the problem is as well, had it come to a head-on-head -on -head -on -head engagement, those 54 lightweights are amazing, amazing dogfighters. The Bulldogs, flanking tanks, second line, supportive ones. Whereas as in this meta, those 54 lightweights are always going to be the spearhead. and They definitely had the upper hand. Great focus fire from EL. They found the priority tanks and they dispatched them very quickly. Now, I have to say something about the M41s. With the amount of damage they could put out in a very short amount of time, they should be able to help Kazna get ahead in the brawl and really come out ahead and, and just lead the way because they'll finish off some people here and there so someone doesn't have to waste a shell. But they weren't able to be as effective as a team as they needed to be. You saw the LTTBs working in and around the team as just shields to, from time to time, keeping their allies alive when it was appropriate. And it was this insane swarm. It's just so difficult to follow. It's hard to imagine how EL trained for this situation because they are, live in constant chaos. Well, training for the situation is probably something akin to paying some guys to just drive their tanks at them and then seeing how they go. Literally, and I told you, throw your strategy out the window. Get your book, your notepad, rip it in half and throw it over your shoulder because it's not going to be any good to you here. EO Gaming play their own game no matter what. And then now we're on cliff. Maybe this is unfamiliar territory for them, but it's not going to stop them coming forward. Tank picks, what do we got? We've got T-54s on both sides. The only difference between these two teams is their choice in Tier 7s. We've got M41s on the side of Kazna. EL Gaming going with LTTBs, the uncommon choice, but it is proving to be effective here. Ostensibly, those Bulldogs should be more effective in those fights. Their ability to dish out that burst damage and take a gun out of the game early should be coming to the fore here, but, I mean, last game, definitely didn't do so. Now, Kazakru set up on the hill. 
They think that there's, there's, oh my god, they're gonna know if a push is gonna come, but look at this, the focus, straight towards your fish coming around the corner. Kaz the crew are not in a position to fire back. Vetso rushed to Ilium on the wrong side of the hill to respond here. Nightmare will get gone onto, so they're focusing one target each. There goes the first blood here, Black's card trying to come across. They're going round and round, ring around the Rosie. Although the damage going into Reflection of Black is amazing, although the spread across Kaz the crew is devastating. We're gonna watch one tank go down. Reflection is almost down, and he is just a few hit points only to that could be amazing for EL, but they are starting to fall apart. That's one shot that Kazna has to use to get rid of him, though, right now. It's four tanks. It's up against four tanks as well. Hyper picks up Reflection there as well, so finally that does go down. Rust is going to get focused on towards now. He's there on reload. He can't do anything at the moment. He has to watch in dismay as EL Gaming turn on towards Kazna Crew. This is the problem with the auto loaders if they don't do the work early on. They're no good later on. Hyper also on reload. These 54 lightweights are chasing him down. And... Isn't is not even reloaded right now. These guys walking out of these fights, you're absolutely right, just not being effective. The LTDBs are just too good. The sustained damage towards the end is just too much. And I, I don't think he can do this. I think sure. this is a time where Kazna needs to keep him alive as long as possible, think about what their next move is, what this next battle is, collect themselves then and there, and then deal with that, because this is over. This is just time to waste so you can think for how to handle these guys, how to ch alter your lineup and change it up so that you can deal with this problem. More hit points, more alpha, what is it? It's, it, it comes down to what Kazza feels comfortable with right now because this is such a situation that is foreign to most EU and Russian teams to just not know your opponent and they're bringing constant aggression like this. No one expected them to be this good at a brawl. Okay, you know, this is the EO gaming that uh, the team should be fearing. This is the EO gaming that rocked SC6. We can hear. The tone in that team speak right now is, is not good. There's a bit of arguing going on, a little bit of bickering. Has the crew, you know, probably the team with the most potential to go on tilt here. Isn't it? Continue to buy them time. And there is the game, though. Three apiece. This is Kazna's map. They chose it. But EL Gaming showing them they are up to the challenge. And now you can see they're cheering, happy, high fives. But they can't get ahead of themselves. Getting overconfident is a great way to start losing out to Kazna if they can get themselves under control. You were talking about that argument. You think that's enough for them to start going uh, on a decline later in this? Look at, look at that screen right now. Oh, yeah. That's a tell right there. I don't think he's in a good place. I'm not sure if, if Kazna is going to be at, as good at recovering from this as they need to be. Look at Hyber as well. The emotions are written on the faces of these guys. It always comes through. Elian is frustrated as well. He got jumped on first, by the way. Eel Gaming almost know, well, maybe they might not know, but it worked out for them. The secret to dealing with Kazna, tilt Elian. Get Hyber grumpy, and he won't be able to make clear calls. You see, they just jumped, they went straight for Elian in that situation, took him out of the fight, and it was like a snake with no head. It just, it just didn't work out. Yeah, it could flop around a little bit on the ground, but it wasn't gonna do much damage. No, not really, it's not lethal. Absolutely. So, I mean, things mix, mixed up now, of course. So, that time, Elon were on the attacking side. Now, they're defending. Don't expect anything to change. No, I don't expect that. Although, the, the jump that you get, the spawn positions are a little bit different. So, your timing and engaging will be a little bit different. EL has to adjust to that. So, is Kazna. Important to know that Kazna was sort of caught amongst the outcrops there. EL, it was actually a beautiful play coming around the corner because they could bring all their guns to bear on uh, a specific target. Whereas Kazna thought that they were going to push over the hill at them and they did the same thing. So they thought they were pushing into Elon, whereas they actually went behind them, split their force half on one side of the hill, half on the other. And by the time the rest of Kazna caught up, well, they're missing half the team. Yeah, the members of Kazna sitting up on the hill, the usual perch that we see them fire down from actually worked against them because the cover there just made it inconvenient to engage against the correct targets. They couldn't focus fire as effectively as their opponent. And the fact is no one touched Isner. He was full health at the end of that fight. But Kazna crew were decimated. Maybe a change up is required here. Maybe think about a, a different tank. Maybe something with a more consistent fire than those auto loaders. It's just, if you don't hit those shots, Every shot is so much more important in your autoloaders because it takes so long to reload. So, any changes here at all, Rikil? No, no changes. They're going to go with the same tried and true, and they're going to see if they can just make it work. Just go at it again. Look, it wasn't the M41's fault. It was positioning. It was us, us in a brawl. Although, from what we could hear and what we could see, they're not in the best place right now.
Okay, so if it's not going to be an external change, it has to be an internal one. Set up here, interesting. Black actually out towards the side. Bit of distraction here. But have a look. Elong still want to push around that corner. Who are they going to find first this time? Kazza just trying to get out of the way. But Vesla's going to get focused on to first and foremost. He's almost no damage going towards Elong. There, Black is getting focused. He's the, the weakest tank on the team. Look at these 54 low weights. They are so big. Easy getting chucked down. Fetzel hits the deck. Nightmare now coming across towards his rear. But they are just chasing Kazza crew. This is Elong Gali. This is pure regression. And they are dynamic and dominant. Yeah, they're trading out one for one. Look at the hit points. You've got a huge lead. EL is starting to get the momentum. Hit points, though, on Kazza Crew are still holding strong. They can still bring this one back if they can regain the focus and regroup. But the high ground is blocking out members of their team. And one of their M41s is on reload. He is not effective right now. That's it. So Elian is going to get focused down. Then it will be Elian and Hyber. Hyber still has not reloaded yet. Elian will literally be on his own in that regard. Hyber is nothing but an APC at the moment, really. He's not much he can really do it all. Reflection, cops a shot in the side. He's still standing. This guy is a star. He always manages to hang on. He's always a thorn in the side. He might not be a main tank, but he's definitely one doing a lot of harassing. Ah, uh, LD Nexus looks like he's about to get away, but Nice just sneaks that shell right in there. Now, Hyba on the high ground is reloaded, and he can deal quite a bit of damage if EL gets ahead of themselves. If they get too aggressive, Elian and Hyba, if they work together perfectly, might be able to do this, but the hit points, 1,617. That's a little bit much against the 1,200 of Kazna. EL Gaming are forcing Kazna to split their fire there. Fox TS took two hits, then backed up around the rock, and then another person from uh, EL Gaming pushed up and went for the shot. Here's a Hyber now going quite low. Fox TS and uh, Reflection can focus the fire onto him there. There's the cleanup. Elian is the last man standing. What can he do here? 3v1. He's all on his own. He can't. There's no way he's going to be able to do this. Elong's playing too well right now. If he goes forward, you're going to see shells connect, and they're slowing it down. They realize we can misplay this. Don't get ahead of ourselves. Send the flank around. Get on the high ground. Elian's going to have to back off and go low. We can get this. We can clean this up. And you can look, just look at his face. I think it's, I think he's accepted it. Kazda crew can't fight like this anymore. It's well documented over the last few maps that EO Gaming are a better team when it comes head to head. They have now snuck their noses in front. It's 4-3. Kazda have one more chance to hold on to this game. It's either Kazda drop out here or we go to our tiebreaker map of steps. Kazda crew, they see the light at the end of the tunnel, but it's getting further away and they're digging their claws in Something must change. There was no change there. Here's, I think I know the answer here. They're being stubborn. They're saying, we can take you on in a brawl. We can deal with this. You guys aren't that much better than us. That's what they're saying. Cocky. But clearly, they're performing so much better in this situation. It's back taken off. them a little bit too long to respect EL's team fight potential. Exactly. They need to back off, bring a heavier lineup, and set up to defend the caps. Just find solid positions and stop meeting your opponent in this position. You are not fighting it as well as they are. They're going around on the low ground, they're staying together, they're maintaining focus fire, and the positions of Kazna are not keeping to that same level of performance. Their guns are being forced to go in different directions, they're spreading some damage here and there. Yeah, they get one good kill at the beginning, but just after that, no tanks from Elong are, are, are dropping for a, almost a minute at a time. Elong are navigating that central part of the map really, really well. Um, my, many people might think that the, the outcropping there is quite innocuous and not really an important terrain feature, but that small sector of the map is really important. If you understand, it looks, honestly, Elong looks like they could drive around that area blind with their eyes closed. They, they know the topography, they understand how the terrain features can, can force over matches in their, in, their, in their favor and also force the other team, Kasner, to split their fire. Yeah, they clearly know this part of the map, and they're targeting it specifically. Look at the way they send an LTTB to get the early spotting and make sure that no one's coming around that corner. Once they verify how many tanks are just in spotting range, they can feel out the positions of Kazna. But Kazna isn't getting that early information as well. They're just going straight up, and they're hoping to get their information as they go up and over, which is just a few seconds behind. And those few seconds are giving Elong that that slight advantage where they can manage the fight better. Can Kazuna afford to give that middle part of the map up at this stage? Yes, you have to. They're not able to deal with this right now. Let's see a 1-2. One, 1-2 two. One, two push, maybe something up on the high ground to kind of hold off for a second, but if you can get the timing, you can get the early move, that could do it. And I think I'm seeing that right now. There's the split. M41, just one of them up top to make sure that things are okay. Everyone else down below, they're going to come up on that ramp, maybe even go all the way around and then start that engagement. But look at the way Black is playing in his LTTB. They haven't did this last round. 
He did this last round, but it, it seems like he's going a little further out, and his route is going to continue even uh, so. Hybe has found his target, starting to line it up, and shots fired, no connections yet, into Kazna. And this is going to slow it down and force EL to go into an uncomfortable position, but Isna is being focused down. He's taken most of his hit points and damage, but Reflection taking almost as much just in return. There's got to be some response here from the Kasna crew. Obviously, Isna get himself set up in a fairly dangerous position. Spring a nice jostling for position. They both want to go for the throat of that Bulldog, but in the meantime, Kasna set up here as well. You can see Rusta and Neuralfish just moving around a little bit. Again, the outcropping's being used masterfully by Elong to try, or EL Gaming, should I say, to try and obscure their positions. Black also playing forward around that uh, around that donut there just to keep the information flowing back to EL. That is risky though. If Kazna can find the angle and if Black maybe overplays a little bit, sneaks forward just enough, he could be taken down in an instant from the focus fire of Kazna. This is nice from Kazna thus far. Here's Reflection. This is the voice of the team right now. He's set up on that hill and you can see him over on the other screen of course. He's just keeping Isna in his sights. Isna can do some work here. I mean, it's almost like EL are forced to stay where they are, but look at the flank from that 54. That could, that could do it. EL might be able to find an answer there, that just tank going way wide. Isna However, if he's spotted, that. if he's spotted, Kazna Kazna crew can respond. They can push north and just use the overmatch, but Isna is down. And with that, the overmatch goes to EL. They can start playing the position, although there is a response from Kazna. It's a few seconds behind, but if it can find a target soon enough, we might be able to see Kazna bring something back into this, as they could focus down the LTTBs, who have taken a little damage, or maybe, yes, Black should be the target. 153, let's see if they can follow it up, and Hybe can connect more shells, Great 166. But this is trade. where Hybe turned the game against School Bus in the finals as well. He actually moved up here with Palauda, and he decimated the, def the defending team. Yes, he did, but... He is taking damage, and you're seeing T-54s fall back if there's not a proper response from Kazna to protect Haiba and make EL pay for this maneuver. That's going to be the time. trigger. It is go time. Rasta out of the front as well. He knows Haiba's going to need some help, but he cops like three shots towards him as well. Odin next is trying to push up. Now to shield Rasta. Keep another gun in the game. Eurofish, look at the crossfire there. That is filthy. Reflection picks up Rasta there as well. Eurofish coming forward. LD next is taking one as well. Reflection in the great spot to assist the focus fire. Shouldn't be going towards the LTCB at all. And look at the hit points, 4,000 against 3,000 from Kazna. It is going in a landslide to EL as they are just having more guns on the battlefield. They are going to start losing some tanks, but they are maintaining the focus, and we know they can do it in a brawl. Kazna crew running out of health points here. EL gave me some random here. It could be the, the final chimes of the bell. Spring does get taken down. Fox TS now on his own up against Hyper and Fetsu, but it is just Hyper and Fetsu, the 2v2 situation now. Nightmare is still healthy. He now joins the party. Hyper's going to get taken down. It's Fetsu, or it's bust for Kazna crew right now. And he is trying to get out of here. He's got to think there's got to be something that he could do. He's going to try and do a Fox TS first. That's his first target. Everything is on Vetsu right now. And no, he cannot do it. EO Gaming and that's set to the crew. They will be in a grand final. This is... This is just insane. That was beautiful after they turned it around. First two from EL. We di I didn't know what I was looking at. I had heard everything to the contrary, but they were playing the match. They knew that this was going to go the distance, that Kazza was a team to respect, and they had to try and play with their heads. And they targeted that. They went right for the emotional heart of Kazza, and they just took it apart. Kazza crew made a grave, grave error picking Cliff, especially because they didn't know what EL gaming could produce on them, but that is a four and zero record. EL Gaming are the real deal. These guys know how to play tanks. They will take the fight to you. They will go head to head. A team, even a team like Na'Vi had better be prepared for these guys. <laughs> They're coming out strong. Yeah, and, and they showed growth from what we've seen earlier in other matches. They've shown that they have the ability to play on that next level, that they aren't simply a team that just goes forward and says, I'm not going to stop and I'm going to brawl. They really can play just so excellently. And you can see their map knowledge over on Muravanka and Cliff, how they were able to do that. I hope they learned a lot from Muro because they did not see a lot of, su of success there. But Cliff, you can tell, they are absolutely masters of brawling in the middle of the map. In 2014, it was the PvP Super Friends. In 2015, Elon Gaming have found their way into the grand final. What an upset. These guys, even over the course of this event, the growth has been so evident. They have become comfortable. This is the style that I'm used to seeing from them. This is the style that made them top two in Asia. Look at the look on this guy's face. What a happy man. And the rest of Elon should be proud. The rest of China in the APAC region should be proud. What an impressive performance.
I can't, I can't even begin to un understand how a team can play and succeed with such constant aggression. No other team has made it this far that has been able to just brawl so absolutely clean. And that's, that's really their core. There's, there's not a whole lot else to their, to their just play style. They focus and center everything around just that. And you don't get to see that a lot anymore. You see teams that really focus on cr building crossfires and trying to go for those seven minutes. These guys don't care about that timer. You haven't seen that come into play a lot. Only just once did they have to worry about the time left in the battle and try and use that to their advantage. They go for those brawls. They, have, they practice, they train for this, and it really is refreshing to see a team that focuses themselves around saying, look, we're not gonna, we're not gonna wait, we're not gonna sit back, we're just going to fight you, we're gonna do what tanks do, and we're just gonna go right into your face. Crazy, absolutely crazy, but, well, for more dose of craziness, we'll pass you down to the main stage. Paul Challoner is there with the representative from EL Gaming. Thank you very much, with reflection. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, EL Gaming. Well played. Explain to me right now just how proud you and your players are at becoming the first ever Chinese team to reach the grand finals here at WGL. <咳>真的我有点激动然后更多的是我很幸运有这么好的一个团队和我一起在这里拼搏我们我们之间就是像兄弟像朋友更多的是信任这种支撑着我们然后我们才能在这一次的 um, first of all, uh, I would like to say as the first Chinese team to go to the grand final, uh, we're really excited. Uh, I want to thank everything, uh, thanks to my team. It's really the team matters. We are not only teams, we are, we are also brothers, we are friends. And above all, it's the trust to support us all the way around here. Thank you all. Well done. Um, just one final question. Yesterday, when you played, you, you got heavily beaten yesterday by Na'Vi, so presumably don't want to play Na'Vi in the final. Uh, actually, I want to see the 竞技所有人想超越的一个目标，呃，确实他给他给我们很大的动力进步。呃，我现在要做的是超越他，然后要让他再超越我。Um, uh, he said that, that yeah, Team Navi is uh, their most wanted team because they are really strong. It's Navi that makes them to make progress every day. Actually, Navi is their driving force to, to their final success. So um, his goal is to exceed Navi and then let Navi exceed them again. Okay. Well, congratulations, Reflection. Well done to EL Gaming, ladies and gentlemen, our first grand finalist. Done EL Gaming, an impeccable play and such incredible aggression. We have been waiting to see something like that for a while, and we're going to have to rewrite the book, guys, because that was beyond impressive. And Mojo, I want you to start to break this stuff down first. Well, I feel like I, like I swallowed the lemon with skin on it. That's how my throat feels at the moment. Uh, these guys brought aggression to the new level. Kazna already met them on VCA, barely beat them. They knew how aggressive they are. I really don't know why they fell in this trap. This kind of game is what won European Championship to Kazna. Having 54s and Bulldogs, hold your ground, wait for an enemy mistake, counter push. But these guys, they seem to bring a new meta. They brought two constant shooter tier 7 tanks. 
They ignored Bulldogs all the time, pushed with the entire team, go, kill one, kill two, kill three, ignore Bulldogs while the fight is done, Bulldogs on a reload and they are dead weight. They are ch just chased around to be killed. And these are four games in a row like this. Kazna, I really do not understand. Even two guys in Kazna are in TCM. We played Cliff really good and tactical. Why didn't they back out? Why didn't they just leave one spotter and snipe them out while they are coming? Like they did on Muravankovic 32. They would do initial damage and then they would build, win the brawl. This is something like they fell to this semi-finals hype, maybe. I don't see any other... This makes no sense. Even in the middle of the fight, Elong, Bulldogs, we don't care. They were driving around the Bulldogs, ignoring the Bulldogs. Just giving no, you a, don't exist. Yeah, Bulldogs. You don't care. They were focusing the T-54s. And even though the HP seemed even, at the end, what did we have? Two single shooters for Elong, two reloaders for Kazna. Nothing they could do. And like Mojo said, their positioning for this type of play was horrible. Um, the first game, they saw what Elong was going to do. And they should have realized they're going to keep pushing, pushing, pushing. There is ways on Cliff where you can set up for this, where you can prepare for some team to push in and play it more tactically, because they're tactically they're more advanced. But I think they were, like Mojo said earlier, they were trying to prove a point. Elong beat them in their own play, uh, game style. This is the game style they won the finals with, and Elong beat them at it just because, also the LTVs, just because they went in, they were not afraid, they had good focus fire, they made their shots count, and those LTBs, it didn't seem as significant, but those single shooters, they really changed the game a lot. And that's that kind of window of opportunity again that we've been talking about all weekend, especially when the auto loaders are out of shells, and they know we can push up, we can go forward, and that's a bit of that balance when you go through that tank selection. And because of the nature of those tanks, they were able to still stay in the fight, and that was huge. Huge. And they knew it. They knew it at the very beginning. We don't need to focus on the M41 Bulldogs at all. And they kept doing it over and over and over again, and Kaz, the crew, was just not understanding what was happening, or they kept focusing more on position rather than the expertise of the actual individual tank play. There is also one more thing. In Kazna tried to adapt in uh, last game, and they sent Tizna as a spotter, and yep. they made from the bottom line. That's okay. Yep. But they forgot one thing. That tactic was used when RU was a dominant tank. A tank that goes 80 kilometers per hour. A tank that gets on time to shoot them while they're yeah. arriving on positions. 54s were not on position. Isn't it too bulk of damage? They just surrounded him, killed him. And while, while Haiba was flanking, it was already GG. But even they then, had no spotter. the flank was way too late. I mean, by the time the flank came in, Eason had already died on top. The exactly. flank was way too late. He, was, late. he was a worthless sacrifice. Even for this tactic, I disagree with Eason's position completely. I don't see the use of him. Okay, they cannot push through, but they can just go around like they G4 did. G4 pocket tank. would be much better. Yes, yes. Much or better. even all down the one-two line and a quick flank, pin Elong in the position. Not like what they were doing now. Yeah, exactly what they said. We played it in TCM. They should yeah. have just given them some knowledge. Ola, what was the final count for votes <laughs> for <laughs> this matchup? <laughs> Yeah, actually, it's an interesting case because only 8% believed in Elong. Only 8%? Yes. That, that was less than Elevate from Someone yesterday. Won, won yeah. no offense, offense, Somebody got a lot of codes. Yeah. Someone won a jackpot. Somebody won a jackpot for sure if they guessed the really? match really? score correctly. Yeah, uh, so uh, one of those 8% is going to get their World of Tanks branded Razor Kraken Pro headset. So, well, I'm really happy for all those people. <laughs> yeah, well done, well done. Well, Jonathan... Uh, Setting the focus a little bit more on North America, we seem to kind of harness a lot of the aggression. We like that type of play, and we would find many times, either on Pro Horovka or even Cliff, the ones that would get into the engagement first would set the tempo for what would happen for the rest of the battle. Did it work every single time? No. What did you see specifically that worked for EL Gaming that you want to take home back to America? Well, I think we talked about the difference between aggression and smart aggression. Uh, EL Gaming, every time they pushed, they knew exactly what Cosmic Crew was going to do. They pushed them into position, they knew how Cosmic played, and they exploited that against them. That's the kind of thing that I'd love to see us take to heart and say, you know what, the kind of aggression that we want to play, the kind of aggression that we say in two to three seasons will be possible as we learn 754 more and more, it's possible here at the Global Grand Finals. Definitely. So we're going to go home and we're going we're gonna, <laughs> to gonna have to watch these again. These are crazy. A lot of lab. A lot of lab yeah. time now to, to focus. I must say, for the end, I really admire Chinese mentality. Not yeah. only the players on stage, but their teams that are in audience yes. that are constantly cheering for them. And you're through the thunder of the stage, which is really yeah. overwhelming. I could hear it through my headset. I could hear cheering, it all the cheering. time. Yeah. They were like you could see the guy unit. that was giving the interview, his voice was out. He was playing. But I can imagine the other guys in the audience were like the same. And yeah, like RG Razor and Yato were over there oh, cheering them on. And you can hear that national fervor kind of coming from them. And I feel that it did help. It definitely helped because when, 
it, there's almost like a sixth sense kind of thing when you're in the zone. And we see that all around the tournament when we other do. guys were playing. Yeah. The other way, you know, the yeah, they're, always watching they're really cheating. big units. We're going to take together. some more time to, to break down uh, kind of uh, battle for battle what was happening. We talked about battle one, battle two. The unseen aggression in battle three went in favor of EL Gaming. But then the focus of Kazda crew in battle number four, Morovanka, they were starting to shut down some of the things that, that EL Gaming was bringing, and that happened uh, for those first four matches. But it started to shift. On Morovanka, what would you have done specifically differently? for Casta crew. Is it those lines you guys talked about earlier or was there something else? Were they just going into going into the fights not as calculated as they should be? Think of Morovanka they did fine. It just yeah. more, like it seemed like they were okay. They were yeah, still in control. Morovanka they adapted, but on, on Cliff, like we were talking about the tilt. And I, I really think after two battles they went really on tilt. Because after the game you could see how they were talking with each other, how they were angry. They were not thinking rationally. Because if they were thinking rationally, they would have made smarter decisions than what they did. They would Taki, have played a more passive game. Taki hear that one. Fool me once, fool me twice. I, this is fool me four times. Yeah. yeah, the same thing over and over again on Cliff. And maybe they were just baffled beyond belief that we just lost again and again and again. But getting beyond that, getting beyond underestimating these teams from Asia Pacific and China, that storyline has been prevalent throughout the group stages. But now we have a team from Asia Pacific going to the finals. There's no more underestimating of these teams now. They have proven themselves. Totally deserved. Totally deserved he as well. said it in the beginning. And they beat the SEC 6 too. Yeah, Total he said shock. it in the beginning. Yeah. One shock. If two teams shocks. don't take other teams Very serious limit. enough, then the, it's going to affect the score. And we could see it now. Teams that get overconfident are going to get punished on this level for these kinds of mistakes. And teams that are too focused on what happened in the previous battles yep. are going to get taken out because they're not thinking. They're thinking about what happened instead of thinking in the future. Teams need to really realize Forget about what happened. Think about the next game. Make a smarter decision. Don't play into the hands of your enemy. Let's talk about uh, Cliff a little bit more here. Battle number five. EL was ahead, but they started to drop in hit points, and it looked a little bit concerning. But they were able to bounce back, and that was also with the reloaders happening for the M41 Bulldog. When you're in the mix, when you're in the fight, and you do aggress, as Elevate does a lot, and you start to lose a bit of that advantage from the hit points, do you still stay moving? Do you still stay in the brawl, or do you break off? And how hard is it to make that call? Well, we happen to have a fantastic caller who makes that call for us. I think, as a player, you have to stay in the fight. You have to do what your caller says, and you have to rely on him to make that decision. So if he sees that we have no chance of winning, we have an easy escape where we're not going to be punished too hard, we do back out. However, if there's still a chance that we can stay and we can win, you do have to stay in that fight, because running away, you're going to lose a lot of hit points. And some points, you cannot just run away right. anymore. And you must stay with your yeah. teammates. If no you run away, it's and that was it, one of the big problems. You lose for all your advantages yeah. because we saw where those bulldogs were. They were always on the slopes, sniping from above, like you were saying, between the rocks where they couldn't hit a lot of shots. And at the end, they had three guys surrounding the one guy from Kazna and the two bulldogs trying to reload somewhere else. They were just like helplessly watching. Yeah, they were not doing anything. The rope, I don't have it. Yeah. And also what was happening too, especially in battle number six, was the rotation in the center versus the rotation around the rotation in the center. So you have a cluster of tanks in the middle around those rocks, and that is Kazna crew. And then going all around is EL Gaming firing into the center. And as they continue to move and weave through the different tanks, they're harder targets. They can't focus fire as well compared to the tanks in the center. It was almost just like a classic yes. circle them. Yeah. Kazna, Kazna Back Kazna in the Wild the, West, you'd Kazna circle them in the wagons, the, and they'd be in the center, and you'd take them the out. Bulldogs were trying to shoot tanks, and every single time, one tank would drive behind the rock, shoot the next tank. One tank would drive around the rocks, next tank. And Kazna was pretty slow at reacting. Every time when EL did something, Kazna was late to the reaction. Vetsu got caught for 800 HP when they, when they started pushing around, and they just tried, tried trying Ka to run Kazna away. Kazna really tried the classic move when they pushed in the second game in Cliff like that to go on their side, which is a normal move for tactical teams, but these guys just like Indians. They just kept <laughs> falling around right? them. Okay. And yeah. still ignoring the Bulldogs, that's yeah. what about them. Yeah. I wonder if there was some ego involved there, where Kazan Crew is known as such a fantastic aggressive team. It's very easy to get in that mode where you say, we are the better aggressive team, we're going to come back and we're going to win this. Obviously, they didn't. I, I agree with what you just said. That's a good point. I think because it's their play style, they have a feeling like, this is our game style. We can win it in brawls. Like, let's just keep going. We just need to change this and this, and in the brawl, we can win. And after Murovanka being up so far, I mean, they did what school bus, what happened in the school bus, man. But that's a really good point about arrogance, probably. Right? Where they think they're so good at brawling, they're actually overestimating themselves instead of taking a step back. That's right. a note for any teams they're going to face. It, be it American, be it Asian Pacific, Chinese, European, CIS, you can't underestimate. You need to measure the opponent's strengths and weaknesses. It brings weaknesses memory on one previous grand final game of uh, Fnatic against the yep. Super Friends. Yep. Total and evil. And Fnatic was trying to prove a point. Yeah. They're trying More to prove skillful we, yeah. loses 
just tu ego. Yeah. At this event, it's not about proving a point, it's about winning. It's about, it's winning, about winning is winning. proving the point. As winning is team. proving the yeah. point, period. Battle number seven, the higher ground that uh, Kazna crew had, and you mentioned this, the, the M41 Bulldogs were higher up. You could see the trajectory of EL Gaming staying together. They were almost like a, a, a flock just staying always together. Always 7v5. Yeah, always 7v5. And the way that they pushed up on Cliff was in between a ro those rocks that it was perfect to line up and shoot anything right in front of them with focus fire. And Castle Crew could not do the same thing. They couldn't punish him. They couldn't move out of the way fast enough. And that is also EL Gaming knowing how to play their game on that map. And more teams need to do that. I think teams need to be careful for them on Cliff because it looked like uh, a coordinator, but going together with seven tanks and making good focus fire, uh, he can confirm how hard it is to keep focus on the correct tank where you need to focus and not like drive around and get caught out. It's really, really hard with seven tanks. Absolutely. One spot. And it may look uncoordinated. I don't think there's an ounce of uncoordination no. on that no. team. Everything was perfectly planned, perfectly executed in this match. If, if, go ahead. Yeah, if one of them stays behind, like if one of them starts driving behind another target, he dies and Kazna gets the advantage. But they just kept going around, round, yeah. round. I can't think that uh, they did some superior play here, to be honest. Uh, I just think Kazna tripped themselves really, really hard because they did blind pushes. These were not spotted pushes. They didn't send one guy to see his Kazna. They just went. We talked so about this yesterday, though. If how Kazna, Kazna was behind build. any rock, like taking normal cliff. The map name is Cliff. You have a bunch of rocks you can meld with. But we talked about this yesterday, how they can go on a tilt because they're so emotional, so momentum driven. How they can tilt and not think about all the things. From 3-1, they will rewatch these games bots. in a row. Yeah, they will rewatch these bots and realize whether they're wrong. But at the moment, I think they were not focused on... Not focused totally. Enough. Someone had to put the yes. foot down and tell. They needed enough. somebody that says, guys, guys, what are we doing? What is going on? Give us a second. We're doing this now. And we can Don't only imagine what was going through their heads at that time, too, especially when you're in the lead and then you start to hit a tie and then go into a deficit. The final battle, the crossfire. This shows a little bit more of the flexibility coming from EL Gaming because we saw Kaza crew hang back a little bit. But... EL was getting those shots when they needed it, and they were punishing tanks that were poking out. And as soon as Kazna crew started to push forward, thinking we have some sort of advantage, the crossfire was perfectly lined up. It was almost like it was a perfectly set trap. Yeah, Kazna overreacted to, to Haiba getting pushed because there was two T-54s going for him. And I think they thought that, he, that they would actually drop down and try to kill him. But instead, when they saw Haiba drive down, they were like, okay, they should have let fall down. Yeah, they should, have, they should have let them come around the corner and try to shoot him instead of overreacting. You could see the first guy, I think it was Nexus, taking a thousand damage yep. because of the beautiful crossfires from Elon. I think it was and Raster. Okay. Uh, it was Raster, Raster moving up. For yeah, them. when they were pushing south, but they came in between the rocks, they came around them, they had fire from all sides. They gave them the game. Yeah. The game by then was not decided by Isn't Dying. If those tanks actually went for Haiba down, they would we have, have won, advantage yeah. on top and they would win the game because they would be stuck down. And also the advantage that EL Gaming had as the defenders, right? They could have hung yeah, back even uh, further. No, in this game, you can even see who's attacker and who's defender. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not in this one, but they did have that advantage. So I was waiting to see, will EL Gaming continue to you know, push forward into that center line, into the, into the uh, enemy territory, or are they going to hang back because they can wait. They can wait for Kaza crew, but they were still actively involved in what was happening in the map. And that's something that America definitely has to take a look at because we would find many times that we have the defender's advantage, we're going to hang back. And all of a sudden, they're not looking in a certain area or a tank that was spotting gets taken out and they start to crumble. You have to be actively engaged, even as a defender, or your enemy is going to outmaneuver you. Elon showed, though, Elon showed that even right. with their aggression that they're doing, they can yeah. slow it down a little bit. All right, we got to wrap it up, guys. Ola, any final thoughts, final giveaways we got for our audience? Yes, that's right. So I just wanted to remind that we have several Facebook contests running at fb.com slash WGLEU. Wow, that's hard to you pronounce got it. for me. You got it. Yeah. So uh, first, you can answer a really, really simple question at Gigabyte Contest, and uh, maybe you will be in one of two motherboards plus 100 bonus codes. Then you may be creative and write what comes to your mind when you think of HyperX in HyperX app and win one of three flash storages plus 100 bonus codes. And let's not forget the team vote is already up for the next match. And maybe you will win a World of Tanks branded Razer Goliathus mouse pad. All right. Thank you very much, Ola. We have more stuff. That's uh, everything for maybe now. Maybe later. Maybe later. We still have those 10 tweets as well. Send us your tweets. Use that hashtag, the grand finals. We're going to take a break. We come back. Semi-finals number two, Navi versus Hellraisers. Don't go anywhere. <laughs>